Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Star Trek Discovery Season 2, Episode 7, it's called Light and Shadows. So full spoilers for the episode, as always. So I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. Don't get a look at your face, I'm not getting to that, that first. At the end of the episode, right, so all episode, you know, we've been failing me Spock this episode and he's muttering and writing down numbers and... And Michael's mm, trying to figure out what they we'll are. We'll get to that. You know, is it coordinates? Is it this? Is it that? Right? And at the end of the episode, she's like, okay, they're backwards because everything's upside down and left and right and, you know, Spock's being flipped. Mm. Right? You could give me your thoughts on how we get there in a minute, but you get to the end of the episode and she puts in the coordinates, right? And it comes up saying Talos 4. Now, I want to know, to, to what amount of recognition did you have for that, that name? Pretty quickly, actually. I went... I know that name, like, well, in, you know, immediately. Well, th this is this is why I'm asking, because I immediately went, I know that name. I sat up, I went, Talos 4. I know, we've, we've encountered Talos 4, but I couldn't have told you what episode it was from, though. I had to look up where, where what episode it came from. I had it down to two in my head. Okay. And it was, one of them was the one that it was. Right. The other one that I thought it could have been was... Um, you know that episode uh, from the original series where Kirk was the the last one of the last surviving members of the the guy who killed all the the people on the planet. Right. Yeah. 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 That that planet. That was the only other one in my head that it could have been. I was like, yeah. it's one of those two. Because I was like, Talos Four. We've encountered that, and I looked it up, and I was like, oh, it's the it's because it's even more interesting once I realised what it was because it's the planet that Pike went to pre-original series with Spock. Um, yeah. Which, if I'm reading the Star Trek wiki correctly, has already happened in the Discovery timeline. Oh, has it? I think it has. And there's a okay. general order on that not to go back there. That was one of the things that came up in the Menagerie. Okay, I, I wasn't sure if it had happened already or not. So if it's already happened, if I'm right in saying that, now I could be wrong, but I think I'm reading that correctly. It means that Pike's already encountered the telepath folk, the, you know, the whatever they're called. Yeah, you don't think this is because I, I I hadn't realised that that was already happened. Maybe so I thought, okay, this is going to be that story. You thought it was going to be the cage, essentially. You thought it was going to be that kind of, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, th I think the idea is that because they've already been on a five-year mission. I think the idea is that in that five-year mission, that that was one they of the, were in the okay. adventures. They went on because we know Spock was his 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 first officer uh, or his science officer for that time. Yeah. So, and that's interesting. I I, I I perked up. I was like Talos Four. I know that. And I was like, oh, that that's Pike related. Oh, oh dear. Okay. All right. This yeah. is interesting. What we're we doing with Talos Four. Um, I I think what's exciting for that for me is now I could point at it and go that's just obvious like fan service like they're all going to like, get excited about this. But what I like about this, and what I think is special to me, and perhaps both of us, is that this is the first time something this obscure has popped up that we recognised and went, oh, we know that from Trek knowledge. We know this, kind of. And, and you say obscure. You know, it's obscure in the sense that you, you probably have to have seen it. I yeah, well, well, I mean, it's, it's, not like, it's, it's not like bringing in the Enterprise of Spock. It's, it's something that... Yes. Yeah, it's a yeah. smaller thing that I I only say that because the way it treats the moment at the end is is hey you guys know what this is. Oh sure, but I mean there are some of those a lot of diehard Trek fans watching. They, so. they are, yeah, probably <laughs> rightly <laughs> makes so. Makes sense. <laughs> um, so no, the end of it was exciting. I, I give it that. I actually, I you know, the episode for for the most part I thought was quite good. Again, I I think out of seven I'm... episodes, I'm, I'm six for seven. I'm quite. I'm happy. a lot more mixed on this episode. Oh, I think dear. it's got. A lot of really good ideas. No, but I don't think it comes together. Is it the Spock side of things that you're not liking as much? Oh, both. There's problems both. on both sides. Both. Interesting. Interesting. Um, it's hard for me to be mad at it. Why? Oh God. <laughs> God's sake. <laughs> because I got a diplomatic immunity in this one. <laughs> I I was bawling with laughter, Amanda. I uh, just I just want to say this: this is the first thing we've recorded since I've got back from my holiday. Yes. And the last thing we recorded featured a brand new addition to the diplomat community. I'm like, yes. how? How is this happening? How is this fair? What the hell are you doing to me, universe? 
Yes, I, I've been cracking some diplomatic community jokes. You know, if you're not familiar with that, what that's from, it's a reference to the villain from Lethal Weapon 2, who's a South African villain who walks around going, Diplomatic community! And I, I, I enjoy making fun of that uh, and referencing it many, many a time. What's funny is that it, it was just brought up casually in this episode. Amanda's like, Michael, I will use my diplomatic community to save my son from, from you know, the repercussions of like, yes, diplomatic community. And what was really funny is in the movie Lethal Weapon 2, at the end of the movie, mild spoilers, but I mean... It's Lethal Weapon 2, you've probably seen it. Yeah, first it's Lethal Weapon 2 and also, spoilers, good guys eventually beat bad guys, right? I mean, that's essentially <laughs> what I'm spoiling here. But, you know, he says diplomatic, he yells it once more at the end of the movie, he's like, diplomatic community! And then Danny Glover just goes, has just been revoked, and then he shoots him, right? That's like that's the moment. I love that in this scene, she says she's got diplomatic community, and then Sarik walks in the scene and goes, unless the ambassador overrules it, and I'm like, you should have said revoked! Revoke it! Revoke it! <laughs> Go all in on it. <laughs> You're revoking it, goddammit! <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention, not to mention, uh, George O was uh, referencing the hit television show Buffer the Vampire Slayer with a, a little once more with feeling reference. Bastards. This episode mm. handed me a Buffy reference and a diplomatic community. See, if it was just the Buffy reference, I'd say they watch us. But the diplomatic community, it's too new. You you haven't started, <laughs> you haven't been doing that long enough for them to have been watching that when they were writing this. Oh, true. I was not going to be egotistical enough to even think that the first one was, because uh, <laughs> once more with feeling is still a pretty common phrase in show business. It's not like it, it is, it is. But uh, you know, I'm suspicious. I'm <laughs> suspicious of the folks. Uh, if someone calls Tilly a ginger next week, I think one of the rating <laughs> oh, staff is okay. yeah, yeah, one of the rating staff is watching us. Um, but yeah, so so yeah, so there's two plots in this episode. There's there's Michael. Uh, wants to go and talk to her parents to try and see if they know anything about Spock. There's a fun interaction, I think, with Pike, where he's like, you've already packed your bags, haven't you? And she's like, hmm. Be... Would I have done something like that without yeah. permission? Yeah, so he lets, her, he lets her go off. And meanwhile, the Discovery is investigating this anomaly left by the the stuff above uh, the Kelpian homeworld. I forget the name of the planet. Kel Kel Kelena? Like yeah, there you go. That sounds kind of right. It's, uh, it's in the ballpark. Yeah. So they're, they're investigating this anomaly. Meiko goes off and... Kamina? Kamina sounds right. She she goes home and we get some flashbacks of young Spock again. The young Spock actor. Which I will I will offer up as probably the weakest uh, stuff in the episode for me. Mm. Is young young Spock flashbacks. The actor's just shit, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah it's rough. They, this kid should just focus on his schoolwork because the acting ain't working out. Um... <laughs> Was that cruel? Harsh but true. Was that a cruel statement? I don't know. But she she just meets the mother and she's like, hey, if you know where Spock is, because because Amanda Kane had like almost lets it slip that she just knows where Spock is. Like, I would never tell you even if I did. It's like, you know. You yeah. tell me right now where Spock is. And we end up in this uh cause cause Sarek's trying to reach out telepathically to reach him. And he's but he's in a, this this cave that the shields this the, you know, shows yeah. the telep telepathy. I'm pretty sure it's like a, the, the family crypt, right? Yeah. yeah, he said it was a crypt, yeah. And yeah. so Spock's just muttering things to himself. He's, he's kind of gone crazy. Apparently it's the emotion of whatever he's went through is making him go haywire. And Michael's like, hey, if he was if he was full full Vulcan and not half Vulcan, he'd be he'd be just dead by this by now. <laughs> the emotion would tear him <laughs> apart, which I think is really funny. Um, so what what I liked about this this plot, the, the, it's definitely a little bit shaky in the like all this stuff that Spock's muttering. You know, it's very kind of just old school cliche kind of yeah. you know muttering important important stuff. He's he's out of it. What I liked about it uh, was actually the conversation between Amanda and Sarek about how he was different because he was half Vulcan and how no one at the Vulcan school or whatever wanted to help him with his disability. He had trouble, you know, reading, writing and getting a handle of himself. It was a human thing that he had. And yeah. she used human reading material to help him through that. Um, I kind of like that idea. I don't know. I just Spock has dyslexia? Sin sure. <laughs> I don't know. Seem seems like a just a, oh yeah, we need to add in something. This, this feels like one of those cheap things to me. Um, of yeah, he always had dyslexia. I'm like, did he though? 
What's funny is I'm usually the one to complain that they're retcon and stuff into it. This one doesn't feel like a big deal to me because it doesn't really feel like it would ever be relevant again. I don't know. Just if one, you know, I thought people with dyslexia often have trouble just reading. Every so often, it'll just pop up. Yeah. I don't know. She says he got over it. <laughs> I'm, I'm all yeah, to go with it. <laughs> fine, fine. He's, He's half Vulcan. It. He's half Vulcan. Fine, whatever. He got over it. The Vulcan save him made it made sense of it. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> to quote Dougie Jones, make sense of it. <laughs> Thank Dougie. So, <laughs> it was Twin Peaks Day recently. Though, so I've, got, I've got Twin Peaks in the brain. Uh, Don't blame me. So, so yeah, so... She t- basically, Sarek says, take him to Section 31. Like, I don't want him to be a fugitive any longer. They actually want the information that's in his head, so they'll actually want to save him. And I don't want you to betray your orders, because, you know, I don't want you to jeopardise your entire career in Starfleet again. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's probably the most important reference to her being a mutineer <laughs> we've had all yeah. season. And... I'm like, okay, okay, so she's take, take, taking him in, and sex Leland's all full of promises. He seems like he's been quite genuine, being a decent guy here. He's like, yeah, hey, yeah. you know, we Classic care about him. Leland. We don't want him to be, a be, you know, be guilty. We want to make sure he's okay. But it's Giorgio who comes by later, and he's like, hey, that thing they're going to use on him is going to take his memories, but it's going to leave him a vegetable. Hey, I've disabled the cameras. They're going to turn back on. You need to fight me and escape with him. And so, what's in this for you? And she's like, "Well, this will make Leland look bad, so I'll, I'll get, I might get have a chance of being in charge." So, <laughs> yeah. See, I f- this this is one of those moments where it addresses that. Yeah, she was an evil emperor. She still, she is still evil though. <laughs> yes. Maybe more but of a doesn't... hero, but uh, I mean, yeah. This is the thing. We don't know exactly what her angle is yet because there's a mix of things going on. She she's helping Spock escape to discredit Leland, but at the same time she's holding the fact that Leland has something to do with Michael's parents' death uh, against Which, him. Why would he give a shit? Like, Le- why would Leland care that if Michael knows? I, I don't get it. Uh, well, I wonder if it's not about what that Michael knowing specifically. I wonder if it's like, no one knows what involvement he had that caused the deaths of X number of okay. people. So if Michael knew it, would everyone's going to find out. All right. I'll I'll let that slide. Uh, okay, if if I I was assuming it felt like it was a more personal thing uh, in the scene. I feel like even Pike may not know, like whatever this is. Okay. Okay, I'll I'll let this one play out. That's how I read it. I mean, if they if they tell me otherwise later, then fair enough. Yeah, but... I read it as more. Oh, you wouldn't want me to tell Michael, and I don't know if that felt like a bit of an empty threat almost because I, I I didn't get why he would really care. But he does care though. He he reacts. He does. Cares. Yeah. No, exactly. Which is yeah. why I felt a little bit disconnected in the scene. But I, yeah, maybe maybe that was me reading it wrong. Um, he does seem to care. Like, I mean, I don't necessarily need to know why he cares right now. I suppose. Like, but his reaction as an actor told me he cares about oh, this. Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah. So, like, that's enough for me at least at the moment. I mean, we, we can get into kind of the ins and outs. Of yeah, it, yeah. I suppose. That's fair. But, yeah. So, so Michael kidnaps Spock. Uh, kidnaps me in the right word, but <laughs> she 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 escapes Rescues. with Spock. And they're on a little shuttle, and they're going back to Discovery, like, you know, this is off the books, and she puts in the coordinates, and they're off to Talos 4. So, that's where we go. Yeah, so, my problem with the dyslexia, the bigger problem here, okay. as, as more of a plot point, is she's just like, oh, it's backwards. Amanda was like, yeah, I've been running them through every code algorithm I can think of. They're, they're nonsense, they don't mean anything. <laughs> but but none of the code algorithms tried backwards. Here's a question: Isn't a coordinate backwards still coordinates of somewhere else? Yeah, <laughs> but I assume they just it was yeah, coordinates it was of nowhere. nothing. Yeah, so yeah. you know, it, it, it was like, well, it's not that. It's an empty part of space. There's nothing there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So fair enough. Irrelevant. Fair enough. But I was mean, I just I put that out there. The coordinates backwards would still be coordinates of something. They would, yes. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know. I just thought, really, yo. Know, Backwards seems like one of the first things you should try. Yeah, but she's just a. Actually, no, Michael's also a dumb human. I can't really make that joke. All right, never mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to call her yeah. a dumb human, but. <laughs> <laughs> but Michael's also a human being. So. <laughs> just things like this is, is what this episode bothered me. It just it felt like there were some leaps in logic to make it work. I mean. 
What was funny is I've been quite critical about retconning stuff, but nothing in this episode actually bothered me that much, bizarrely. And I don't know if it was just because the emotion, the character drama, the scenes were was mostly working for me. And I will say, no, I I like all the all the stuff in the crypt, you know, with the, with them yeah. there discussing the family. I actually really like um, Michael's little speech to to Spock, you know, when when he's on the table, like you know, and it's like you know, I'm gonna get you through this. Actually, don't nice part I really like. I like when Amanda, um, Sarah basically at one point says, "Under my authority, you will not do this," and she just kind of looks at him and is like. I am your wife. I am not under your authority. I love yeah. your husband, but try again. <laughs> like I actually yeah. really liked that moment. That was a really nice. Well yeah. that was good. Uh, you, you know, let's say all all these moments I do really like, and and I, which is why I said this episode frustrates me, because there's all these ideas and things I like. It just doesn't come together. There's these the leaps in logic that kind of leave me feeling disconnected. Okay, now. Okay, so the other plot, the other plot, um, there was a lot of burning of Ash Tyler this episode, which I enjoyed. Pike was letting him have Not it early enough. on. <laughs> He's Could like, have been more literal. The chair, the chair <laughs> outranks the badge. I enjoyed that line. In fact, Joe Lane, I mm. really liked. Let me see if I can remember it correctly. So Telly's talking to Saru about what's going on, and she says something that's kind of a swear word, and she's like, "Frick, frick." It's like, "Hey, don't look at me like that." You know what I'm like when there's. Oh god, I was trying to remember this line earlier. Oh, it bugged me. It was it was funny because it was such a specific scientific thing. It was like uh violations of causality. I think that was the phrase. Uh, you know what I'm like when there's violations of causality. <laughs> yeah. And it really made me laugh because it was such a specific thing. This felt like one of those moments where the show was super self-aware that okay, sometimes we did some swearing, but maybe we'll back out of that. Yeah. And then she, yeah, she does some like sort of mild swearing th- throughout the episode. Cause she does it again when there's a, there's like a weird like time echo of, of uh, Tyler and the captain, you know, yeah, from yeah. The seconds before. Which, by the way, I love that she's so enthused about putting the word time in front of everything. Time rift. Time. Time makes it cool. She's not wrong. Yeah, until it's a time like uh, tidal wave or whatever it was at the end. She's like, oh, we have to move. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> please yeah so yeah. so pike's like i'm gonna take the shuttle and uh, get, get close to launch a probe because we can't just do it remotely and i used to be a, a test pilot or a probe you know pilot whatever and he ash is like i'm coming with you because black badge and pike's just like ah i can't get rid of you you prick i mean that was that was the sentiment. fine yeah so he, he comes he comes with them and they're kind of kind of debating and babbling and they're arguing with each other Yep. Uh, yeah, and and this was a moment again that that kind of caught me weird because Ash immediately accuses him of like, oh, you're just doing this because you feel guilty about the war, hmm. and I felt like there was no indication of this uh, from Pike's part to us. I think it's fair there wasn't in this episode. There was when he first showed up at the start of the season. There was definitely re- regret in his part that he couldn't participate in the war. That that has been but established in his character. No, no, absolutely that has. But I mean, in regards to this specific action of yeah. Pike being like no and it, it tries to the whole you know we always question why is it always the captain going down yeah, on the missions yeah. right and he's like i'm the most qualified so i'll do it damn it uh so it tries to do that but uh, but ash is immediately like you're just doing this because you you feel guilty and i'm like wait what is does that apply to everything he's done this season uh maybe his determination i maybe but it, it felt like it's a fair point, actually. To it, accuse it, him of this specifically. It's a fair point because at the end of the episode, when they're back on the ship, and they're kind of apologizing, they're, they're kind of seen eye to eye for the first time. Where Pike admits that, okay, maybe you're right about a couple of things. Maybe you're right that I, that's why I wanted the mission so bad. And obviously, Ash admits, hey, that technique that I said was wasting the fuel was actually the only thing that got us saved. You, you were right to make that call. Which that's actually something that we saw in original series. It's uh, the, the 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 Galileo seven. Uh, seven, yeah. Galileo seven. Uh, Spock did it in that one. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the problem is here, and it's not just because I don't like Ash. This is this is not the the problem here. The problem is that I don't necessarily just like. There wasn't that much justification for it, so when Pike... Because I didn't really mind Ash accusing him of it. It was Pike saying you were right at the end. I was like, wait, was yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my thing. I, like, I didn't get any of that. Like, Ash just accusing him of felt like... I was immediately against Ash on this. Not because I don't like... Although, I mean, it helps, right? Yeah. That I don't like him. But it was because I was like... There was nothing that was presenting that to us. That That's why Pike was doing it. Uh, there was nothing I was I was not getting all, that all sense it, from anything except Ash's accusation. 
all it needed was someone to really try and talk him out of it before he went, and then him to just kind of wave it off, and then that'd be, yeah. that'd be enough. Just that one moment would be would be enough to like buy that. Okay, someone noticed that, and it's like you're determined to do this, even though yes, it's not the right thing, or it's against protocol, or it's whatever. Um, but the actual mission, they're in the, they get sucked out of the time rift, and there's all these weird echoes that you know Pike at one point sees them in the future a little bit, and. They're trying try to survive, and then the probe they launched before returns and tries to kill them. Is is a little bit of a V'ger situation where it seems to have evolved. Although, as they put it, someone might have tampered with it in the future and sent it back, which is yeah. intriguing. Uh, so they're t- tackling with this. It also tries to scan the ship. It tries to scan the discovery. It's looking for information. Intriguing. Could this be the discovery yeah. in the future? I don't know. I'm just putting that. Out I there. was thinking, that, you know, you know how uh, last week we were speculating. Maybe it's the, you know to do to do with the guy that went off, right? Yeah, you know, from that short trek. What if uh, there is no one inside the the suit of the Red Angel? What if it's just the, the AI? The AI, yeah. What yeah. if it's just a mechanized suit? Uh, yeah, okay. I can I can get on board with that. Um, what's weird though is that none of this is even set up in the main show. It's all just been from that short trek. So this could be yeah. just going could down be a bollocks. rabbit hole. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they're doing that, and this this part of it's kind of fun. And we've got the, the rest of the crew like, okay, this is this is not a research mission anymore. It's a it's a rescue mission, and we're trying to figure this out. And then they basically figure out that Stamets is immune to the time like fluctuations. He he can see he through can it. He can just see through it. Yeah. Yeah, because of the his connection to the mycelial network. So. They use him, and you know everything with him and Talia was was just making me kind of have fun, like like him just smile, isn't it? describing what they have to do, and she's like, "Oh, if we're a fraction out with your calculations, it'll, you know this won't work." And he's like, "That's why you're going to be there to beam me into the the thing." And she's like, "I knew you were going to say that," and then she's like having to beam him, and she's all looking nervous, and it, like all yeah. of it's just kind of delightful and fun, and it is. Yeah, Stamets really ends up on the, the little shuttle, and he's like, "Yeah, we can beam back out now because we can lock onto me or whatever." And, yeah. yeah, it's like technically I'm here ten minutes from now, so just go with it. Yeah, just go with it. I feel like that was the writers talking directly to us. Uh, it was a little bit. <laughs> just go with it, and 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 that almost leads me to my problem with this side of the episode. Yes, I love everything this does. Mm. Right, you know all the all the, the 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 time rift playing with the echoes, great stuff. But it doesn't do enough with it. It just presents the ideas of hey, look what we could do. Because it, it only really plays with it those two moments of the, on the bridge where, where it's first introduced, and then we get the flash forward where you know Pike sees him potentially shooting Ash, and I'm like, there's yeah. so much more you could do with this. And honestly, I, I want like just... I, no, but I wonder if they are. I want I wonder if this was just the setup for like we're establishing this is kind of how this works because I it's hope going, so because uh, it's going to be I, relevant in a later episode. I, I hope so. I want it to come back because I enjoyed it. It just feels like, as a looking at this as just an episode on its own, it feels almost, I don't want to say half-baked, because that's that's doing it a disservice. Yeah, sure. It so feels... It's only 40 minutes this episode. Oh, is it? It's a good 20 minutes shorter than the last two, yeah. Okay. So it, it's, it's not that it feels half-baked, but it feels like it's just not quite there. Like, it's got all the right ideas. It's just not quite coming together. Okay. I mean, I mostly enjoyed this episode. I think, like, I actually kind of agree with some of the complaints. Um, but it wasn't really dragging me out of it too much. And the ultimate ending here is that, okay, something sent this thing from the future. We know the angels from the future based on the te- tech that it was wearing. So it's not like, is it possible that this came from the same time as the angel and that the angel isn't as friendly as we think? Yeah. And also it's seemingly infected Arium. Yes, yes. Uh, her eyes go all, uh, she's kind of freezes for like a bit and then it's like, Okay, and then she acts normal afterwards, but it's like, okay, what did that do? There's clearly something that it's just done. Yeah, yeah what's, what's in there? Some sort of virus infection to her. Mm, it's interesting. Yeah. So, but no, that was that was the episode. That was... Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I had problems, but they weren't like fundamental problems with the show in, in the way that they have been in the past. Yeah. They I... just uh, didn't quite come together as much as I wanted it to. Yeah, I still like this more than most of season one. But this, like, the problems here were different from the problems in season one, where they are, yeah. Things may, may not just be clicking together, but it, it still feels like it. It has a direction, like it knows where it's going. Like no, it's... it does. It 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 is part of the overall story. It absolutely feels like this knows exactly what it is and where it's going. It was just as an individual episode, it felt a bit 
cut up and a bit, you know, uh, mm. haphazard. There you go. I actually thought when Michael left off that we weren't going to see her the rest of the episode. I thought they'll save that for next episode. And I think I might have preferred that, honestly, if we'd spent more time yeah. on each one and done an episode on each. And it'll just be, you know, the, the main crew on the ship. And they're, yeah. they're, you know. I think we could have developed this time rifter stuff a little bit more if we'd done that route. Yeah, I can see that. Like a whole episode with this time rift stuff and then a whole episode with her, Spock, the parents, Section 31. Mm. Yeah, I feel like that, that probably would have benefited both of them. All right, so uh, that is uh, episode seven of Star Trek Discovery. By all means, let us know what you think. And if you're wondering why this is a couple of days late, earlier than usual, it's because Carr was on vacation, and this is the first chance we've had to to record it. So uh, I'll be back to its usual time, give or take, next week. But uh, yeah, so let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the Twitters at mailed underscore fudge for channel updates. If you want to support the show and the channel and everything we do here, you can head over to patreon.com slash mailfudgetv uh, where you can support us for as little as a dollar per month. Uh, and obviously we appreciate that always. So thank you very much once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla?